exactly just uh, uh, wait a minute okay i think we should wait for 2 minutes and then we'll start uh, they will be here with, uh, with with within seconds okay yeah, I, I guess we can uh, dr usman if you agree or if, if uh, natalia if you agree we can probably start on time we can start with you know the proceedings and then panelists can join uh, whenever they feel like or they are feasible enough to yes sure uh, we have 1 minute left so we will start at uh, 3:30 sure let's let's wait for a couple of minute okay. and then we can obviously sure. start Natalia I'll, I'll really like you to please uh, switch off the cameras and uh, you know the mics Okay let me see Yeah you know if somebody you know somebody is lying down or somebody you know just just switch them off Okay Okay, Dr. Matiola is here, and uh, Dr. Shad will also be here within a second. Okay, Natali. السلام علیکم ویسر شاد ہے جوائن سر السلام علیکم اف یو کین ہیئر می سر آپ میوٹ ہیں آپ کا مائک میوٹ ہے So Natalia, can we start um, our today's talk? Yes, sure. We can start. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, first of all, um, brief introduction of mine. I am Dr. Usman Musharraf. I am working as consultant diabetologist and endocrinologist at Allied Hospital, uh, Faisalabad. Today, uh, we are having uh, a session on diabetes management and associated risks with diabetes. Uh, I've 
I am a grateful to Feroz and Pharma for arranging this uh, series of academic activities for healthcare professionals. So let me introduce our first, our speaker one and the universal speaker, uh, Dr. Uniba Sayyad. Dr. Uniba Sayyad is working as a consultant endocrinologist and she is assistant professor of endocrinology at Alama Iqbal Medical College. And uh, we have a one speaker today. So let me introduce our panel of experts. Our panel of, in our panel of experts, we have uh, Professor Dr. Ishad Hussain. Dr. Ishad Hussain is big name in the uh, field of medicine in, uh, in Pakistan. He, he is ex-professor uh, of medicine at King Edward Medical University, but uh, nowadays working as uh, head, head of department in Rangers Hospital, Lahore. Our second panel of expert is Dr. Imtiaz Hassan. Dr. Imtiaz Hassan, uh, he is director of uh, Diabetes Institute of Pakistan in Lahore. Our third panel of expert is young energetic endocrinologist uh, in, from Rochistan, uh, Dr. Matiullah. Dr. Matiullah is a consultant endocrinologist at Bolan Medical College, Quetta. So without any further delay, I will request Dr. Univa Sayyid to please uh, start your talk on diabetes and its uh, risk management. Thank you so much, Dr. Osman, for your kind introduction. And I'll, I'll just, I just want to say that this session is, um, it is really important because I have my colleagues with me in this session. I have Dr. Osman, I have Dr. Mativi, who are my colleagues, and then I have my mentor since my house job. And I, I will always mention him that professionally, you know, he's the person I've been always, I've been groomed from. He's Professor Rishad Hussain Sab, and it's really an honor for me to speak in his presence. Now, before I share my slides, I'll just tell you guys one thing that uh, this is because it is a series of sessions actually. So uh, the today's uh, you know discussion will be uh, not very long and it is only uh, you know uh, just pertaining to what the risk factors are. It's just that you know it's nothing more and um, it'll it'll be it'll be a small one and uh, then obviously with the next sessions we can um, we'll go further. So if Dr. Osman, you can tell me, can you see my slides since? Yes, Dr. Nibal, we can okay. see we can see your slides. Okay. So uh, I think this is uh, first we have here um, recording of Talawat. I if I, I I'm unable to play. Okay, I've played it. Doctor Oniwa, please unmute it. We can't hear. Uh, Dr. Osman, actually, I don't think so. I can unmute uh, or mute it. This is this was this is already included in it. So, if somebody from uh, Natalia, if you can do that, kindly do that. If not, I'll just skip to my slides. Uh, I think you should skip because I'll do that. Sure, sure, sure. I'll do that. Okay. So now my first slide would be. <clears throat> This, this this is something which we have been talking about for like since November 2021, 20, uh, I guess, you know, Pakistan has now reached the third position amongst the, you know, amongst the countries as far as prevalence of diabetes is concerned. And this is back from uh, IDF 2019. And the only thing is, this is the projection for uh, the prevalence of diabetes by the year it is 2030 and 2045 for both male and females that it is constantly rising. And it has an association with age groups as well. And I'll be discussing this uh, later on. Just a brief uh, look out of what uh, risk factors Okay, so what risk factors can we uh, actually, we can, uh, you know, we can just talk about. First of all, it is uh, the family history of diabetes, be it type 1 diabetic patient, be it type 2 diabetic patient, family history uh, is very important. Then the BMI, for us Asians, it is not uh, the usual one which is taken uh, for everyone. It is like 23 kilogram per meter square. Then the sedentary lifestyle then high blood pressure, obviously hypertension, then dyslipidemia or abnormal cholesterol levels, then history of gestational diabetes, which is very important. 
age factor is always there and now i think the ada has even decreased it not 40 to i guess 35 for the screening as well and then if you have impaired glucose intoler uh, glucose tolerance or impaired fasting glucose level so let's just see these risk factors only for today first of all okay i don't know if my slides are moving my slides are not moving for some reason Sorry, I have to stop share because my sliding, uh, my slides uh, were not moving. Just give me one minute, I'll share again. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So talking about uh, family history of diabetes, as I said, type one and type two both have uh, a very much effect in that. Okay, now talking about uh, type one diabetes, if the if there is a paternal history, that is your father is type one diabetic, the child has a risk of one in 17 of getting it. For maternal history, it depends, it has a little bit of, uh, you know, age factor in that it is almost one in 25 uh, if the mother is uh, before the age of 25. Then for type two, just uh, genetics, they do also play a very strong role in type two. It's not just the type one, which is you know very uh, common perception out there. Then for the type two, if the there is a family history, a person has 40% chance of developing if one parent is there and 70% if both parents are there. So now I think I think this, this I have actually cho chosen because this, these readings are far more than what we are actually uh, we have been studying this is not that much in our textbook but this is one um, recent paper which was then the, which this study was done in the united kingdom and then this was presented in uh, india i think and they have um, mentioned this big percentage and i deliberately added this here because i really want to have um, you know our expert panel uh, discussion over this uh, percentage which, which they have you know actually mentioned they also mentioned this thing, reverse diabetes, which I personally am not, uh, you know, I'm not in favor of using this word because being an endocrinologist, my perception would always be that you can control diabetes and maybe sometimes, you know, it is the honeymoon period stuff or uh, transient remission might be there. Reversal of diabetes is not possible as far as I am concerned. So today, although the, the you know, the, the risk factors is very simple to discuss, but I have deliberately, you know, chosen a few things which actually need to you know maybe a little bit of discussion or maybe a little bit of point from our panel so what they had mentioned was how do you reverse diabetes and the strongest evidence that they pointed out was by the weight loss now we know that weight loss is important and this was the study which was done from 25th july uh, 2014 to august uh, 2017 in which you know they took the adult uh, population of 298 people and then uh, they were put on weight management program. It was a three-step program with the low calorie formula diet with 853 calories diet for three to five months. Then they stepped food into, uh, introduction for two to eight weeks. And then there was an ongoing support. What they saw was that 46% of the participant who lost weight significantly did not have diabetes uh, even after one year later. So now here, what I found it as, uh, you know, something to be looked upon is that if there is a person who has an over, who is overweight, who is obese, who has a significant insulin resistance, if that person loses significant weight and then maintains it, he can somehow halt or slow down the progression of, uh, you know, diabetes. This is what I deducted on my own, uh, you know, my own knowledge based on my own knowledge. This also is another point of discussion here. So what they, they did was the diabetes reversal describes the process of returning to blood glucose level below those used to diagnose it. So basically it was, it was remission and they, were, they gave the reverse diabetes uh, word to that. 
then they discussed uh, the bmi which is which we all know is important it is a, so it is like same with the, the previous slide those with the highest bmi group with them it was 34.5 had 11 fold increased risk of diabetes compared to participants with the lowest bmi group which which was uh, 21.7 for them and i i got this um, you know study which was in uh, published in 2018 in internal medicine and what it showed was just just you know uh, related to this that if the weight was lost with bariatric surgery, the risk of microvascular complication, it is decreased. So this, uh, I, I still have to see if it was maintained or it, the risk of diabetes was, uh, you know, the, the decreased risk of diabetes was maintained in the longer run. It was not there. It was just, um, you know, the effect of bariatric surgery was seen. And this, what they found was the microvascular complication had significantly decreased when the patient's weight was decreased owing to the bariatric surgery. The other we all know is the sedentary lifestyle, and we know that uh, you know the body fat percentage and B, uh, the the BMI of the patient is really important. And if you are um, you know living uh, living a very sedentary life and you you are not uh, you know doing the exercise of one hundred and fifty minutes per week or which is like for five week five days a week at least thirty minutes per day with the no two no breaks for two consecutive days. This is what ADA say actually. If you're not doing that, you are at risk of developing the diabetes. Then we have concomitant uh, risk factors. High blood pressure, what we would say in uh, our technical, uh, you know, medical term, hypertension. This uh, hypertension poses an increased risk of complication in a person who already has diabetes. So uh, with diabetes and hypertension, it is said that 40 to 80% of diabetics have hypertension and diabetics have two times likely to, they are they're more likely to have, you know, uh, hypertension. And I don't know if it is, it might be a uh, part of metabolic syndrome and, you know, it's going, it has an association with there, but then this is a, this is a fact that they have a little higher risk of developing hypertension as well. Coming to the dyslipidemia, high cholesterol or dyslipidemia can also contribute to high blood glucose level. Okay, now this is point A, whether this is it contributes to that, I like to have an opinion about that also. However, the ADA states that diabetes often um, lowers HDL and it raises triglycerides and LDL cholesterol. The other thing is a history of gestational diabetes, and we all know that uh, risk of uh, female patients of developing uh, just uh, you know who develop gestational diabetes and they developing uh, diabetes mellitus in the uh, next five years is definitely increased the other risk factor is the age now the screening has been decreased to age 35 years uh, in ADA 2022, but then uh, it is uh, screening is recommended because by, once you cross that age, you are at high risk of uh, developing diabetes. And then if somebody has an impaired glucose tolerance or impaired fasting, it's like I, I would tell my patients that uh, whenever it's it's like mein, one step there, you have diabetes and one step back, you can uh, save yourself from getting diabetes for a, a particular period of time. This is how I tell uh, my patients who actually cannot figure out what impaired diabetes is and what is the phenomena is. But all of us, we actually know that if somebody has impaired diabetes or impaired fasting glucose, it's almost that they have reached the threshold of um, diabetes until unless they uh, intervene so they uh, they they, uh, they thought that they figured out that 20 to 50 percent of pre-diabetes patients they progress to diabetes in five years and obviously when they are progressing to diabetes there is increased cardiovascular risk now this increased cardiovascular risk i was just going through an article is also increased with impaired glucose as well it does not necessarily means that patient has to have diabetes and then their cardiovascular risk is increased uh, I think uh, with the with the risk factors, the, this is it. Interestingly, all of the risk factors we are all all of us are actually well versed with. This thing is that somehow whatever was uh, you know presented in each of this um, below each of this risk factor had point to discuss. It is somehow although it is. Um, you know, it, it agrees to what we are, we have been studying, but somehow the percentages, if you, you might have noticed the percentages given in this particular, uh, in, you know, article is, uh, 
a lot higher to to my knowledge a lot higher than we have actually learned and uh, that's that's the one reason that i really wanted to discuss so family history bmi inactive lifestyle hi hypertension dyslipidemia gestational diabetes age factor and impaired glucose all of these uh, they actually uh, contribute to the development of diabetes and then uh, because uh, it's the first uh, session the next sessions they might include how to work on these risk factors, how to reduce what the, what is the primary prevention, and then uh, moving forward. So next, um, okay, so next session would be cardiovascular disease mapping in the diabetes, which will be the session two, I guess. Uh, this this I'll end here, Doctor Swan, and I'll get back to you here. Doctor Swan, hello. Okay. Uh, Dr. Neva, I think you are the only speaker. You can talk on second session as well. No, 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 Usman. Uh, the, the thing is, this second session is not today. Oh, it is right. the next session. I'm just, I'm just, I just wanted to, uh, you know, I see when you, when you are, uh, you know, the, 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 there's a la larger program coming up and you're starting with a very small step. I just wanted to tell the audience that this is what is coming up in the next, uh, you know, um, the next plan. It would be the cardiovascular disease mapping, actually. All right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Neva, for your uh, wonderful talk, uh, like always. Uh, no, I, will, I really, I, re I really, I, I pointed out a few points and I really picked those up my, when I was going through that. Dr. Mati, if you could agree as well, and Dr. Uh, Professor Shah Sahab, of course, Dr. Imtaz is there. Assalamu alaikum, sir. And very, very much, you know, uh, although they are supporting <laughs> it, but I don't think that these, uh, these uh, you know, percentages are, uh, I don't know, maybe they, I, do, I don't think they are that much of, uh, based on the true level. And I really want to get, um, a comment on all from all of my panelists and even Usman, you can do you that too. All right. Uh, so I will request uh, our first panelist, Professor Dr. Ishad Hussain, please give your expert opinion with, on, on this uh, talk on diabetes and uh, its uh, risk management. Uh, Dr. Usman, uh, sorry for interfering. Jeetha, yes. Sorry. yes. Uh, uh, I would like to request the panelists to, if uh, they can discuss their cases, uh, like um, about any case about uh, reverse diabetes or any risk factors that they experienced that the patient followed some uh, guidelines and they reversed their um, glucose levels and diabetes mellitus. Okay, okay. So it would be more. Uh, so, Dr. Um, Ishtar, can, uh... can you please explain your practical experience uh, regarding uh, diabetes and uh, obviously. Uh, the reversal of type 2 diabetes. Uh, what is your practical experience? Please unmute yourself. And, Thank you. And your comment about my question, sir, as well. What was your question? I said that the, the present the study that I, I had this in presentation was, although it was telling us the same things, however, the percentages that were mentioned were to me quite high. You know, they were higher, like 70%, 40% would develop, 80% would develop. I think that these are not that, that much. What do you think? What do you think, sir? If, are they actually mentioning a, a very big percentages or, uh, or suddenly the percentages have changed? No, I, I will agree with more towards that study. That What I have noticed in my practice is that most of the patients who have got both parents diabetic or a strong family history mostly mostly i agree that 70 percent of the patients if both parents are diabetics they usually have diabetes or they are pre-diabetic and they're going to develop diabetes one important point which i have noticed is that in family that if if patient has presented with strong family history and he is not diabetic, I have seen that most of the patients, they have got high triglyceride level much before the actual manifestation of diabetes. Increased TGs are um, probably, they may be considered as a harma, uh, the, uh, as a indicator that patient is going to develop diabetes. So as you discussed, various risk factors, I have seen only few patients that who have 
frank diabetes hba one c was high they were on drugs and then later on they becomes uh, with normal hba one c so first thing which comes into mind is that may they have developed renal impairments or have they got marked weight loss mostly usually the problem is that they they have got nephropathy developed and now they have been con controlled with same without medications or they have got the weight loss done and in insulin sensitivity has again regained somehow but few patients it, it was not explainable to me they, that their kidney function was normal they have not lost their weight and with 3 4 years of anti diabetic drugs and now they are without and reason which not was not explainable to me that how the diabetes is controlled recently few two three days back i have seen a patient for which i worked up for renal disease and other and I, nothing was there not there was weight loss and he was without drugs for one year so sometimes this happens how it happens is not explainable to me uh, as practical experience seen so are you what the various risk factor you have discussed there are few mostly they are modifiable risk factor the two the one the age we can't stop and the genetics we can't change i always narrate uh, the wording of one of my colleagues uh, he used to say that if you are you can't change genetics if your father is poor it is your bad luck but if your father in law is poor then you are stupid so this means that you can't you can't choose your father but you can't you you can choose your father in law so same is with diabetes the family history considering diabetes history may be a point and similarly uh, other modifiable risk factors uh, must be spread among the general populations regarding the the weight control sedentary lifestyle and hypertension and dyslipidemia these are definitely a close correlation with diabetes and uh, uh, hypertension is particularly hardly 25% patient in my experience is they are normal tensi most of the patient who have diabetes they are hypertensive also whether it diabetes preceded or the hypertension preceded the diabetes whatsoever is a very strong correlation and uh, same is the pre uh, the patient if it is pre diabetic already they have got low reserves their uh, beta cells have been reduced and uh, controlling the other risk factor as dr niba has said very rightly you can go a step ahead or you can go step backward it depends upon the patients so excellently explained by dr neva uh, she is very good presenter i always admire her and excellent coverage of the risk factors means Thank a lot you. coming from you as always uh thank you sir uh, now our second panelist is dr imtiaz hasan i will uh, request dr imtiaz hasan to please hear your uh, expert comments uh, assalam alaikum everyone and uh, particularly uh, excellent presentation by uniba sayyed the professor shad and dr mati my friend and uh, i think uh, that we should uh, keep the regarding the first question of the niba which she has raised very and uh, pointed out uh, very rightly that uh, what is but you must i agree with the professor irshad the figure is quite high the reason is that if you keep in mind the actual prevalence of this disease which is uh, coming around 29% which is highest in the in the world so you can well imagine that uh, you you can have so many patients that the incidence would be like this because I, in usual practice which i see in, in my patient with in my clinic that the patient the coming the their uh, uh, siblings are coming their children are coming and one day they are they are coming themselves they have, they have developed the diabetes so i think these are the right this is the right cohort which you have to address very rightly that you educate them that uh, probably you are the potential diabetic and you must go have very uh, because the screening and the the cut off line for the screening has down to the 35 years before it because previously it was a bit higher 
<clears throat> by the ADA. So I think uh, the incidence is quite high in this part of the world, and we should agree. And uh, uh, I was just looking in the, uh, the right lower, lower corner of this uh, screen that is stop diabetes. I think uh, we are uh, practically we are doing nothing. This is one of the effort uh, that we should uh, uh, increase the awareness among the masses that uh, what are we have to identify the potential diabetic who can develop diabetes sooner or later because the incidence of the potential diabetic are also very high. And the incidence of uh, uh, the eight, we are having 8.8 .8 million of pre-diabetics, which are ultimately they are ending up with the diabetes. So this is the one aspect that we have. A, this is very uh, the great fact that we are having very high incidence and we we'll sooner or later, I to my patients, we have two kind of patients, two kind of patients, persons in the Pakistan. So how much you stop it and how you can interfere, how you intervene. So this is the question. This is regarding uh, uh, the second uh, question, the reversal of the diabetes, practically it is theoretically because it, it, uh, it has gained the popularity by the when the professor Ross Taylor presented his uh, the twin cycle theory that uh, obviously first you develop the fatty liver. The fatty liver, I think it is one of the risk factors probably. And the raised ALT, AST was uh, also one of the risk factors that which are even present before the on clinical onset of the diabetes. So, so first of all, you have the fatty liver, then this fat is uh, ultimately, it is diverted towards the pancreatic uh, tissues. So, so obviously then you develop the type 2 diabetes. So if you take the very low, very low calic diet, obviously you can reverse it because this trial has shown that the reversal is quite possible even without the bariatric surgery. But uh, the thing which you have might have noticed in your uh, practice that how much of the, what is the incidence of the patient which adhere to this weight loss, which are having the persistent weight loss. You, you can even count in on your fingers, these, these your fingers, were the patients yes. who maintained a very, very low incidence of this maintenance. Because the, to, I was just going through la, last night, uh, just preparing my lecture on the fat diets uh, and uh, by Vail Cornell, the PES meeting. So, so it, it was really amazing that the people are uh, more preferring the ketogenic diet, but they're not aware of what is actually because they cannot uh, take uh, this much diet or the other diets, uh, the South Beach diet is so for a pretty long time. The adherence is quite poor. So I, so similarly, that can be reflected very easily that how much in the reversal of the diabetes is possible. Uh, I, I don't have the uh, actual figure in the Pakistan regarding bariatric surgery because how much people they have undergone this bariatric surgery and they reverse their diabetes. Obviously, it would match uh, the rest of the world, but of, but people are, uh, this uh, last uh, week I was just uh, uh, presenting my uh, case, uh, uh, one of my presentation in the family con, and one of the presenters he just talked very high about uh, the reversal of the diabetes in very. And uh, the, I think uh, that it is quite, uh, some of the facts, they were quite misleading. And people are, uh, obviously they are going for the reverse. It's a very, very attractive idea that you, you can reverse the diabetes, but you have to put a lot of efforts and the adherence and the persistence is quite, it, it, you need a very great persistence. Itna bada dil chahiye, itna bada, bahut badi efforts chahiye isko reverse karne ke liye. So reversal is quite possible. It's theoretically, it was it is twin cycle theory ke tahe, Ross Taylor ke, ke paper ke baad. Obviously, it is quite possible. But only you see you see the very low of forty six percent of the people they had the reversal of the diabetes. So, so would it be reversal are, or remission? Remission. So remission. So similar. Simulation. Like, this is the right word. You have used the right yeah. word. The remission of the diabetes. No, no. That 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 was my own uh, perception about re reversal. That it might not be reversal. It's like it, it's a it, remission it, it, till the time you are maintaining the you know weight, and the moment you lose that, it'll you know it'll come back. The presenter on this a family con. The second presenter he said that all the which were doing this is wrong and it was all rubbish. So, but but I think that as far as we are not we cannot implement this very low calorie diet to 800 calories to a person and you cannot advise. So you have to change the behavior because eating pattern is a behavior. It is it is it is just like your religion and it is just like your faith. 
because the things which you take in your childhood, obviously you maintain all of your life and it's very difficult to change the behavior. So maintaining a very low calorie diet reversal is there, it theoretically is there, but how much percentage of the people they can have it. So uh, the Niba has rightly said that <sighs> we have to manage it we, on the day-to-day -day basis. We have to avoid the complication. We have to manage the weight. We have to manage the diet. And obviously, we have to follow the guideline. Obviously, the guideline, they just help you out. You cannot negate with a single sentence. This is all rubbish. So I think that uh, it is possible. The remission is possible and pharmacologically with the diet and with the bariatric surgery. Uh, thank you very much for uh, giving me precious time. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, thank you, Doctor Imtiaz, for your uh, very good, very uh, comments on diabetes and its associated risk, and especially reversal of uh, diabetes. Uh, so there is an announcement for all the uh, audience that you can ask any question if you have, or you can um, you can uh, write your questions. So you can ask any question, and you can write down any question in chat box if it is there. So moving onwards to our third panelist, our third panelist is uh, Dr. Madhiullah. I will request Dr. Madhiullah to please hear your expert uh, comments. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks to Ferozan for giving me this opportunity. Uh, excellent presentation as usual by Dr. Uniba. She is uh, probably the future of PES. And uh, thanks to uh, Ferozan for inviting all of us on this talk. It's a difficult topic to discuss the risk factors uh, when we don't uh, act upon uh, these things. So uh, my, my uh, opinion would be uh, actually the same as Dr. Imtiaz and Dr. Uniba just described. I don't believe there is reversal of diabetes once the patient develops diabetes, the patient had a lot of chance of not developing diabetes. He was obese, he had a family history of diabetes, he was living in Pakistan, he was eating and he had sedentary lifestyle. Still, he got, got this diabetes. That means that now the reversal or the remission is only possible if he changes his behavior as uh, pointed by Dr. Intiaz very well that unka behavior change hoga weight loss wo wala weight loss jo ke crash diet se nahi hoga wo ek behavioral changes lane se ho to uske baad main believe karta hu ke there will be remission and there will be long term remission uh, as uh, natalia said ke koi cases aapke paas hai fortunately in quetta uh, the last two years i am practicing so i have uh, a lot of cases aur main alada likhta hu but maine divide kiye hai in sab cases ko the difference between newly diagnosed ya phir early diabetes and long term wale jitne bhi diabetic patient hai in dono mein ek bahut bada difference hota hai newly diagnosed ek to jaldi respond karta hai aapke dawaiyon ko jaldi aapke baaton pe believe karta hai aur uske sath sath wo behtar hona jaldi shuru hota hai isliye unko aap jo bhi kahenge aap next visit mein kuch aur bhi kahenge to wo demands puri ho jati hai aapki like for example a patient comes to me with polyuria polydipsia 400 500 ke sugars hb1c 14% ek aur doctor sahab ne unko kaha insulin but i know that inka diet behtar hoga aur dawa milegi to guidelines se thoda sa deviate karke newly diagnosed mein aaram se hum dawaiyon se chala sakte hain now aapne unke upar ek ehsaan kiya insulin na dekar इस एक टैक्टिक को यूज करके आप उसके साथ साथ दवाइयां शुरू करके डाइट का उनको कह दे कि ये डाइट करेंगे तो इंसुलिन की जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी सो नेक्स्ट विजिट में व्हेन द पेशेंट कम्स वही सल्फोनाइल यूरियाज वगैरह जो आप चेंज करके इस बार एम्पाग्लिफ्लोजिन या फिर इफ अफोर्डिंग जीएलपी तो फिर द पेशेंट विल हिमसेल्फ बिलीव के यार ये तो मैं 400 रुपए आया था अभी तो 100 उनके एक्सप्रेशंस बदल गए हुए होते हैं सेकंड विजिट में देन दिस बिकम्स वेरी इजी फॉर यू टू कन्विंस हिम के आपके वेट की वजह से सब कुछ हो चुका है आपका वेट आपकी फैमिली हिस्ट्री तो बदल नहीं सकते हो मगर वेट तो बदल सकते हो तो आई बिलीव इन दोस पेशेंट इट इज वेरी इजी टू हैव अ सस्टेन्ड रिमिशन डॉक्टर उनीबा द वर्ड सस्टेन्ड रिमिशन इज आई थिंक बेटर तो रिवर्सल तो किसी भी चीज का पॉसिबल आई डोंट थिंक है सस्टेन्ड रिमिशन डायरेक्ट ट्रायल में भी रिमिशन का वर्ड यूज हुआ था आई डोंट नो ये रिवर्सल का वर्ड कहां से आया बट रिमिशन का वर्ड यूज होता है हमेशा रिमिशन बेसिकली मींस कि अगर उन्होंने 15% वेट लॉस किया तो 80% 85% ऑफ देम वुड हैव द सेम कंडीशन एज ही वाज बिफोर द डायबिटीज 
वट वॉज दैट ही विल बी इन अ प्री डायबिटिक स्टेज और आपने कहा था कि दरवाजे से वो कभी भी वापस एंटर हो सकता है अगर वो वापस वेट रीगेन करता है तो इसलिए आपकी बातें और डॉक्टर इम्तियाज की मिलाकर मैं ये कहूंगा कि बिहेवियरल चेंजेस लाकर आप बिहेवियर में सीडेंट्री लाइफ स्टाइल को बेहतर करें उसके साथ साथ जो है वो इनका डाइट बेहतर करें और बाकी जो उनके खुद उनको फील हो कि ये करूंगा तो मुझे आगे फिर से डायबिटीज होगा डायबिटीज जो है वो एक लंबे अरसे की बीमारी है ये कोई जुकाम की तरह तो नहीं है ये तो पूरी जिंदगी की बीमारी है तो अगर वो क्रैश डाइट करेगा दो हफ्तों के लिए तो दो हफ्ते वाला तो डाइट तो और भी खतरनाक होता है कि वो करके वेट लॉस हो जाता है फिर रीगेन भी इससे ज्यादा होता है सो so, इसलिए आई बिलीव के पहले दिन से ही उनको हम ये समझाए कि ये आपने मोटापे का इलाज करना है डायबिटीज का इलाज तो मेडिकल स्टोर वाला भी कर सकता है कि कोई भी उसको सल्फनाइल यूरिया देकर शुगर बेहतर हो जाएगा मोटापे का इलाज मीन्स के डायबिटीज प्लस ओबेसिटी दो ड्रग्स शुड बी रिकमेंडेड पहले विजिट में भले ना करे एम्पाग्लिफ्लोजन या जी एल पी बट एटलीस्ट सेकेंड थर्ड फोर्थ विजिट में वेन द डायबिटीज इज वेल कंट्रोल्ड नाउ वी हैव टू फोकस ऑन द वेट वी हैव टू फोकस ऑन दी अदर कम्प्लिकेशन और एक थौर तरीके से अगर उनकी मैनेजमेंट हो जाए और वक्त के साथ साथ वेट लॉस होना शुरू हो जाए तो ना सिर्फ उनका डायबिटीज मैनेज होगा बल्कि वो एक रिवर्सल या रिमिशन की तरफ जा सकता है लाइक like मैं जब से प्रैक्टिस क्लिनिकल शुरू किए तो उस वक्त से ही ये डायरेक्ट ट्रायल आया था मैं बहुत बड़ा फॉलोअर हूँ इसका मैं बहुत ज्यादा फैन हूँ ये डायरेक्ट ट्रायल का मैं अपने हर जगह इसको कोट करता हूँ एक जगह पे ये जो डॉक्टर इम्तियाज कह रहे हैं कि इस तरह फैमिली कॉन में ये हुआ था तो मेरे साथ भी एक जगह ये हुआ था मैंने काफी ज्यादा मिसलीड किया था ऑडियंस को के फैंटिसाइज किया था अब जाहिर है यहाँ पर तो बहुत पढ़े लिखे लोग हैं तो इनके सामने मैं नहीं बोल सकता हूँ बट कम पढ़े लिखों के सामने जो है वो फिर थोड़ा सा झूठ बोलना पड़ता है मरीज के सामने कि ये वेट लॉस करोगे डायबिटीज खत्म हो जाएगा ये हो जाएगा सो वो चीजें पाकिस्तानियों को पसंद आती है वो मैं जरूर करता होता हूँ अपने क्लिनिक में या कभी भी मैं जीपीस को जब लेक्चर दे रहा होता हूँ तो उनको अट्रैक्ट करने के लिए ये बातें करता हूँ शायद उन्होंने भी इसलिए कहा हो थोड़ी सी कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी फैलती है थोड़ा उसमें मजा आता है बट एट द एंड ऑफ द डे इफ द पेशेंट इज लूजिंग वेट इवन इफ द पेशेंट इज नॉट इन रिवर्सल तो फायदा तो है ही उसको अच्छा कंट्रोल तो हो जाएगा एटलीस्ट सो मैं उनको यही बोलता हूँ कुछ आते मेरे पास सर आप तो कह रहे थे ये रिवर्स हो जाएगा तो कुछ नहीं हुआ शुगर उनके अच्छे होते हैं बट पेशेंट इज स्टिल ऑन ड्रग्स तो मैं उनको फिर ऑब्वियसली आप मुझसे ज्यादा इसमें माहिर है तो कन्विंस करते हो कि ये और भी चीज है सर आपने एक और पॉइंट कहा था कि नीचे लिखा हुआ है कि स्टॉप डायबिटीज स्टॉप डायबिटीज सर कैसे हो सकता है यहाँ पर अगर बिजनेस किसी ने शुरू करना हो तो रेस्टोरेंट का बिजनेस नंबर वन ठीक है सर होटलिंग का नंबर वन खाने जो है वो आप अगर चाहिए होंगे कोई देसी या सही वाले खाने चाहिए होंगे जिसमें डायबिटीज ना हो जाए वो कहीं मिलते भी नहीं है वो महंगे खाने सो देर फॉर इट्स नॉट पॉसिबल फॉर अस हम सिर्फ इसको हॉल्ट करे जितना अभी ट्वेंटी है ना 20 पे रहे इट इज बेस्ट आई थिंक विद द पैसेज ऑफ टाइम एज वी नो कि 2000 और 99 में समझ शेरा साहब ने कहा था कि 7 टू 8 परसेंट है पाकिस्तान में डायबिटीज नाउ अब 2019 में हम कह रहे हैं कि uh, 20 परसेंट है या कोई डेटा कह रहे ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट है समझ शेरा से कि 2045 में ये अलार्म करने के लिए कहा था कि 2045 में पाकिस्तान में 15 टू 20 परसेंट हो जाएगा तो 2022 में हो गया 2020 में हो गया सो so, अब 45 में क्या होने वाला है ये बताना चाहिए सो so, फिर डॉक्टर अनिबा ने कहा था क्या ये सच है बिल्कुल सच है अगर किसी को जो है वो पेरेंट्स को दोनों पेरेंट्स को जो है वो डायबिटीज है सो एज प्रोफेसर इरशाद सेठ के बिल्कुल 70 परसेंट चांस है बल्कि इससे भी ज्यादा चांस है क्योंकि वो पेरेंट्स फिर भी कुछ एहतियात कर रहे थे कुछ वो एक्सरसाइजेस कर रहे थे तो वक्त के साथ साथ और भी मामले खराब होते जा रहे हैं सो आई थिंक दिस इज अ पेंडेमिक एंड वी हैव टू स्टॉप दिस पेंडेमिक Thank you so much for uh, Dr. Mati, mera khayal hai ke uh, for you uh, we can change it to uh, from stop the diabetes to stop the diabetes from progression. That would be fine yes. with you, I yes. guess. Yeah. Yes. Stop yes. the yes. diabetes from Pro- progression. देखिए प्रोग्रेशन भी एटलीस्ट कॉम्प्लिकेशंस ना हो जाए और एक डायबिटिक पेशेंट प्रोग्रेसिंग एज इन आई वुड से प्रोग्रेसिंग एज इन प्रोविलेंस इन आवर कंट्री एंड वी एक्चुअली नीड टू स्टेप अप हियर we if if we do not need to if we do not step up as a diabetologists and endocrinologists physicians anybody who is dealing with diabetes if at this moment we do not step up we are going towards a big havoc that will be in our country we might not be able to control diabetes at all I, at all I, I agree. and uh, thank you so much for uh, presenting uh, dr uniba it was an excellent presentation maine bade kam मैं मुतासर होता हूँ किसी प्रेजेंटेशन से वो भी ऑनलाइन से और वो भी ऐसा टॉपिक जो कि टॉपिक का आपको शायद पसंद भी ना हो yeah. <laughs> तो ये टॉपिक तो मैंने कहा भी तो मैंने नहीं प्रेजेंट करना है बहुत बहुत अच्छी है कंग्रेचुलेशन ऑन
very very yes, nice sir, and means, very simple yes, present means a lot sir means a lot and dr mathi you have been uh, very kind always thank you so much okay uh, if you have any question for audience if, if you have any question you can ask uh, from our speaker from our panel of experts uh, i think there is no question in chat box main ek so, baat kehna chahunga ke medicine mein koi cheez bhi harf e aakhir nahi hoti कोई पता नहीं जिस जैसे आज से 10-15 साल पहले हम हेपेटाइटिस सी का कहते थे कि बड़ा मुश्किल है और ऐसी डायरेक्टली एक्टिंग ड्रग्स आई और ऑलमोस्ट क्योर ओपेल हो गई डिजीज तो कोई नहीं कि मुश्किल में कोई दवाई आ जाए जो बीटा सेल को रीजेनरेट करना शुरू कर दे या पोलिफ्रेट दोबारा शुरू कर दें तो डायबिटीज क्योर भी हो जाए फ्यूचर में हरफे आखिर कोई नहीं होता Uh, especially uh, those unfortunate kids who are having a strong family history of diabetes like uh, both parents they have diabetes uh, their siblings uh, they are diabetic so uh okay i guess doctor doctor mathi am am i am i audible yes okay i guess doctor usman there there has there has been some connection problem from inside i i could get his question what he was trying to ask so uh, firstly uh, if doctor usman would have been online i would have, i would have told him unfortunate children <laughs> i i i thoda sa disagree with that but you know we have actually seen uh, type two, there there was this time when i was probably a student and you know maybe in um, north medicine and uh, we, we used to discuss that type 1 diabetes look in children type 2 diabetes and even like when we were students third year fourth year type 2 diabetes mostly in adults we have actually we are the generations who have probably seen seen things changing and now you you do see uh, you know patients of aged like 6 year 7 year even 10 years with lots of insulin resistance such a big you know big belly and uh, you know um, abdominal circumference and um, bmi which is a lot more than what is required and so much acanthosis nigricans and then you know the oh my god this is type 2 diabetes and uh, for past i don't know i have seen for past 4 years 4 to 5 years if uh, if you would agree to that 4 to 5 year this thing has rapidly increased i would put this on along with sedentary lifestyle i would definitely put this on the gadgets and the mobile phones and you know the the all the stuff that children are using nowadays starting from coco melon at the age of one and a half years to every cartoon network that that we we used to play out i i myself was a sports woman so i know that sports are so important now you do not see it there are so many uh, factors gadgets these are one thing then uh, you know the situation that our country is in parents are a little concerned to let their children go out and play but then we need to uh, you know we need uh, we as a society we need to build it in a way that we create physical activities for our children be it in school be it at, at house and stuff and reduce the sedentary lifestyle when obviously a bigger bigger portion of the food they are taking the, the you know the, the all the, every weekend and every week they uh, party with the mcdonalds or kfc or whatever it is and obviously soft drink i think every type of soft drink needs to be uh, mentioned i i would say mentioned people drink it like anything and children they like like to drink it all of these factors have actually very actively contributed to this uh, this thing and now i have seen so many young type 2 diabetes diabetic patients and i'm sure all of you must have taken the only thing that i could figure out is along with drugs and everything that we have been discussing i think this is a high time that we start modifying uh, you know the lifestyle right from the beginning not only of the children you cannot tell the child not to eat this when there's some uh, some other person who is eating this like you have three children if one has a tendency to gain weight you cannot just tell that child not to eat something you know your your siblings can eat and you cannot i think this is the whole dynamic of the society and the family per se needs to be modified in a way that it is uh, you know moved towards a little not a little as actually towards a higher uh, 
you know, the, be it portion, be it whatever you're eating, be it the physical activity, only then we can actually um, interfere, I would say, interfere in this disease process. Otherwise, uh, I, I, I have been uh, worried actually about this thing that the, you know, what you call the future of our nation are becoming diabetes, uh, you know, from a very, very early age. Thank you, Dr. Anibab. But uh, by the way, what was my question? Unfortunately, yes, I lost my question. Okay. Yeah, okay, you did. You. you did. So I, what I, what I, what I, uh, you know, uh, touched was development of type two diabetes in a younger population, which has actually been on rise for past few years. This is what I, what I touched a little uh, because I figured out that this was something on these lines were what you were asking for. Okay, exactly. It was. Uh, so uh, I think we don't have any other question in chat box. And uh, so I think it's time to conclude this uh, session. Uh, so I am uh, at the last of the session. I am thankful to Firoz and Pharma, Dr. Oniba Sayed, and all the worthy panelists uh, who have joined us. Thank you very much. Allah Sir, Allah Hafiz. Dr. Mati, Allah Dr. Osman, thank you so very much. Allah Hafiz. I think Dr. Imtaz has already left. <laughs>